I started dating internationally and can never go back. So my international dating journey really comes in two contrasting parts. Horrible experiences dating in the United States and incredibly wonderful experiences dating overseas in countries like the Philippines, Thailand, Colombia. And it's worth mentioning that I grew up in a weird time. Being a millennial, I remember life before cell phones, before texting, before the internet and computers were like mainstream. And then right when I was about 15, I got my first cell phone. And by senior year, Facebook had come out. So I witnessed that huge change in the culture in America, especially in regards to dating. And essentially, my experience dating in the last five years in the U.S. was just really weird, man. Like, you get online, obviously a lot of people use Tinder, but Tinder is actually 75% men, 25% women. So just a horrible numbers game to begin with. So all the men are competing for like a small amount of women. And that makes the women, in my opinion, think that they are so much more high value and sometimes even more beautiful than they really are. And along with this, you hear a lot of uh, things now like you should really value a woman for their personality and their looks are not important. And there's a, that trend that was going around that fat is sexy. And for me, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, it's not. You know, I, I value my health and working out and I'm attracted to women who value the same type of lifestyle. And one of the first things you'll notice when you start traveling and, and dating around the world is that the contrast, there really is like an obesity epidemic in America. I really noticed that the second I land in an American airport when I'm coming back from overseas, it's like, wow. By the way, I always get a few chads that say, you know, dating in the U.S. is very easy. You know, you just don't have any skills. Well, okay, understand that you are in the minority, Chad. You know, I did have best mates who, whenever we went out to a club or something like that, I mean, I swear to God, like, they could just stand there and women would come up to them and start making out with them. One of my buddies would just take them by the hand and take them home. I mean, just a complete natural. And understand that you guys are rare if you're one of those. Um, if I could repeat your strategy, I would, but I can't. Most guys can't, you know. I'm not six foot three with like an amazing jawline. You know, those are things that are out of my control. I'm powerless over those things. But what I can control is where I date. And I choose to date overseas. So, you know, you got to play a game that you can win. And I really don't like this new thing that's kind of trendy. It's called text game. You know, it's been out a little bit, but it's very popular in modern Western cultures like the United States where you need to be able to, I hear this, like you need to be able to spark attraction and intrigue and mystery through your text. You know, and I'm pretty old school. It's like, hey, you know, I don't use my phone to have these long conversations. It's like, hey, what's the point? You want to get together or not. And I do have some experience, you know, making in-person approaching, doing day game. And, you know, I'll say that I've never been rudely rejected overseas with in-person dating or approaching, you know. And, uh, you know, by gosh, I have had so many brutal, uh, rude rejections in the United States. And that just doesn't happen overseas. But here's the thing, you know, not all American women are bad. And it's not that there aren't any good American women. I'm not trying to say that. But as a culture, as a whole, things have really certainly shifted in the last decade, so much different than how, you know, the vice that I would get from my grandmother and mother, how things were when they grew up, the rise of feminism, individualism. And I've been hearing a lot of things lately like, I don't need a man, you know, or men are the problem with society. And with that, you know, it seems like, you know, your modern woman is more masculine or at least has a lot more masculine qualities uh, in their personalities and they're less willing to play those traditional gender roles who have really worked for society since the beginning of time and that's fine you know but it's also fine for me to want and go and date overseas then right and the funny thing is I'm in my mid-30s and a lot of the women that I tried to date in my early 20s in college and even after I got a really good job in my mid-20s those women are now my same age. They're also in their mid-30s. And they see me winning now because I spent a lot of time focusing and planning. Uh, you know, everything I've done so far has been by design. It's been intentional. And now I'm starting to win in life in my mid-30s. And here they are at, you know, 35, 36. They wasted all that time when they were younger, you know, going to clubs and dating chads. I wasn't good enough for them. And now they're like, hey, um, I'm kind of looking at settling down now, Eric, how are you doing? What are you up to these days? And I'm always cordial, polite. I'm not trying to, you know, 
upset anybody, but it's like, yeah, I've been, I've moved on, right? <laughs> so I made a decision, you know, and, and seeing a lot of my friends who did get married early on, uh, get divorced, you know, they say that marriage rates in the U.S. are nearly 50%. And then when those happen, they end up losing half of their life savings. I created my plan and then I've executed it so far. It took several years of sacrifice, but I was incredibly intentional and strategic with my plan. And, you know, by the way, I created a video here where I talk more in detail about that plan. So, you know, I could travel more full-time, long-term. But essentially, I got started back in 2019, going to the Philippines a couple of times. I was just blown away with the dating. I was so thirsty that I actually fell in love with the first woman that I met. And it turns out she was, I was kind of lucky that how awesome she was. But I also had several other nice dates on those trips. And by the way, don't do that. Don't fall in love with the first woman that you meet. And so I went back to the U.S. and, you know, went all out, just saving my money, uh, planning to take a six-month trip in 2020. I was all ready to go. And then guess what happened? The COVID pandemic hit, which really actually delayed my trip for a year and a half. So what did I do? You know, I didn't get frustrated. I didn't complain. I said, wow, I've got a year and a half here to really grind and make this plan better and save all the money I can. Just grinding and saving money, grinding and saving money, taking overtime at work, reducing my expenses. I moved in with a bunch of dudes, started a blog as a side hustle, started making money. So use your time wisely. You know, Don't fall for those immediate gratification traps. Build a long-term plan. And realize that dating overseas, you are a catch. It will boost your confidence. The grass is greener. Really try to travel for a month or longer. You know, you guys that are just taking one week vacations, that just ain't gonna cut it. That's not dating, you know what that is. If you're able to stay overseas for longer, you can really attract some women that are just dime pieces, both on the outside and on the inside. Women that are sweet, caring, and attentive. Because the first thing a really quality woman's gonna ask you when you're in a foreign country is, a quality woman, is how long are you here for? And when, if you say, you know, oh, I'm just here five days or I'm just here two weeks, they're going to go pass. That's just my two cents. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and I hope to see you on the road soon. Ciao.